What's going on everybody? Come back. We're going to start talking about cameras. I told you it was coming. It's coming. It's here. We're going to talk about two of them particularly that I use the most and how I use them. So come back. Let's talk about cameras. Well, it's going on, everybody. It's Patrick Mid 10 Outdoors, House My Outdoor Crew doing. So, I told you this series was coming, and it's here, and let's get to talking about cameras and how I use my cameras, when I decide to use my camera, which cameras I decide to use, and what really, what, I'm not going to make any suggestions of what you ought to use. I'm not going to do that. That's up to you. I'm just going to show you what I use. In this video, we're going to talk about two cameras, particularly right now. The first we're going to talk about is my Canon SX730HS. And then the second one we're going to talk about is my big camera, which I'm filming on right now, so it'll be kind of hard to show you everything about it. And it's my Canon Rebel SL3. So, let's get turned around and we're going to look at cameras together. Before I bring you the camera and start talking about it, I want to say this in the beginning. I am amateur. I am not a professional. I am an amateur when it comes to cameras. I am an amateur when it comes to filming. But I can get you some good techniques to use. I can give you some good ideas of cameras to use. Now, my base cameras that I use most of the time are all Canon except for my activity cameras or my action cameras. Those are totally different. Those will be in a different video altogether. But for the most part, my main camera I'm shooting on now is a Canon. And my, what I would call my blog type camera is a Canon also. So let's, let's take a look at the first one. Okay, so the first camera we're going to talk about is my SX730HS, which is this one. This is what I call a point-and-shoot type camera. Now, I highly stress in this, it just it helps a lot when it comes to framing, is the fold-up screen. The screen folds up, so if you're vlogging with the camera, you can see the screen you make sure you're in your shot. I will say I like a flip up screen a little better than the swing out, which this camera has the swing out screen. If you get yourself caught looking at the screen instead of the lens, like I tend to do with this camera, and you'll notice it in the videos when I'm shooting with this camera, sometimes I'll look at the screen. Sometimes I'll fold the screen around so I don't see it. But what I like about this little camera is I can take this camera just about anywhere and film. I have filmed on airplanes with it. I have filmed in the car with this camera. Uh, hiking trails, I have filmed with this camera because it's not very heavy. Um, you'll notice this right here on top of the camera. That's called a windsock. You can pick these up on Amazon. Uh, just type in windscreen for cameras and these will come up. May have to search a little bit, but they'll come up. If I can find one, I'll leave one down in, in the description down below. I am almost dropped it. There is a newer version of this camera. I'll leave a little blip right there, and that'll be the model number for the newest version of this. Now, if you're wondering, yes, this is much like the G7 series cameras that a lot of people use. The big difference is the quality on this one's not as good, but it's good. What you have to weigh in the consideration, if this is the only camera you're going to shoot with, if you want to go with the G7 and pay the 800 bucks for it, go ahead. You're going to have a great quality video. You're going to get as good, not as great, as good a video quality with this one as you would have with the G7. Now, I'll throw in a clip right here of the Smoky Mountains. All of that was shot on this camera. Every bit of my Smoky Mountains was shot on this camera or a GoPro. But for the most part, most of the video was shot on this camera for the Smoky Mountains. 
um, a lot of my a lot of my hikes in the in 2019 era and a lot of my trips in the 20 well in the 2020 era was shot with this thing I didn't get the camera I'm shooting on now until well into 2020 era of uh, YouTube for me the only drawback to this camera is it does not have a mic input on it now some people may not want that and this mic picks up extremely well I have never had a problem and with the Donald Trump hair on top I've really never had any problems with wind on this camera I've never had any problems with not being able to hear my voice on this camera so I would I not recommend this camera for anybody I would if you're on a budget and you can only spend three or four hundred bucks I would recommend this first now you can hit the used market i have no quorums whatsoever hitting the used market to buy my camera this camera that i'm shooting on right now i bought used i didn't buy it new but it's a 2020 camera the person that bought it used it for a little bit wasn't doing what they really wanted to do so they sold it i bought it and i bought it at a discounted price but if you're looking for one camera a point and shoot style camera may be the ticket for you the flip up screen i mean you've got it you've got it right there so you can do that vlog style talking to the camera and see yourself the whole time um i can tell you because i had a 1200d which was actually chase's it did not have any kind of a screen to flip around so you had to frame up your shots get in front of the camera and do your thing or have somebody shooting the can the video for you there are some things now that you can put on the hot shoe and it has a little mirror and it shines down the other downside we'll get into that stuff and on that camera shortly but if you're looking for one camera this will do it this will do it now we're going to rearrange things we're going to talk about the SL3 next okay so now we're going to talk about DSLRs or the DSLR I own I own a Canon SL3 this is a what they call a DSLR if you're not familiar with them um, DSLR the big difference in these cameras are they're, they're they've got a main body and then they have a detachable lens whereas the point and shoot everything's all contained you don't have anything external this you have the external lens you can add the external microphone and you can add grab handles and lights and all kinds of stuff change your lenses to something like this I'm not gonna go in depth on each camera I will say that this one I can shoot in 4k 1080 or I think you can even shoot 720 with this camera. This is what they call a crop sensor. There is a difference between crop sensors and full frame sensors. I'm not going to get into that right now. There are better videos out there than that for that particular subject. Search them out and they'll tell you the difference when you have a crop sensor what it does to your lens now I will say this I've been using this camera for well won't be long as a year um, and I've done all kinds of stuff with this camera now usually only when I'm filming in here might I use the light um, when I'm camping I'll use this light sometimes in the tent to help add a little bit of light to the tent Okay, for the most part, I use this camera like this with the microphone sitting on top. When I was in Chattanooga, the whole Chattanooga video was shot on this and a GoPro. These are much heavier than the point and shoot. So a good strap or a hand, um, they make a hand strap that you can use too with these, are a must. Um, other things you can do is you can use, if you're carrying a backpack or anything, they make a mount that goes on the bottom of the camera that locks onto your 
uh, backpack so you've got it handy at all times. The downside to both of these cameras, they're not waterproof. They're really not weather resistant very well. You can use them. There are things, and we'll get into accessories in a different video altogether. I will probably do a video on accessories alone for cameras of different things you can use. Because trust me, I have bought it just about all. Do you need it all? No. Not at all. Not to do, not to do what we do. But I will say, get a camera, use it, learn it. But with the DSLRs, you have extra lenses you can change out. Now, I will tell you, these are my two go-to lenses. And some people are going to say, you know, there's a much better lens than that. Well, there are. They're expensive. The kit lens that comes with this camera, which is 18, no, yeah, it's 18 to 55. I use this lens all the time. The whole Chattanooga video was shot with this camera on this lens. I didn't change lenses the whole time, changed batteries, that was it. This lens is a 24 millimeter wide angle lens, tele, wide angle lens. I'll throw a couple pictures right now that I have taken product photos with this lens. Hands down, it'll do a better job than this lens. But I like using this lens for that. Now, I have done some videos with using just this wide-angle lens, but I don't use it very often for filming. I always use my 15, 18 to 30, uh, 55 lens, kit lens, factory lens. Um, also, image stabilization on the lens and in the camera and in that camera are always on. One thing I do not do, there is a wind filter on this camera and that camera. I do not use them because I have dead cat on this one and I have the fur that's on top of that one that I use all the time. So that cuts down the wind and sometimes the wind filters on the cameras will muffle your audio and you don't really need that. Uh, matter of fact, this one I keep it on manual on the um, volume and everything and I cut it down to a certain percentage and it gets great audio. Awesome audio. Like I said, we'll get into talking about accessories for the cameras at some point. It won't be on this video, but trust me, when it comes to accessories, I have bought them all. But that's it for this one. I'll keep it simple. If you have a question that you would like to ask about either one of these cameras and how I shoot with it, you know, what I do with it. I have done both, used both of these cameras as a vlog style camera before. This one's much easier to do that with. Like I said, the screen's flopped up. I'm looking at, looking at the, uh, the screen, but I'm also looking at the lens. And that's key. You want to be able to look at the lens. Sometimes it's better if you can't see that screen. Sometimes it's better. That way you're looking at the lens, you're looking at your audience, not the screen to make sure you're in focus. But uh, you can use either one of these for a vlog style camera. This one's much more expensive. You're looking at the $800 range to get started with a good DSLR, but you can buy used for a decent price. I've got friends that have got YouTube channels that are using used cameras this was a used camera. That's the only new camera I've ever owned. Brand new camera. That's the only one I've ever owned. All right, guys, that's it for this video. It's probably long. I hope you watched it all. Um, but I told you I was going to bring you this series. My next series is going to be on action cams and, and the other cameras that I have that I use from time to time. So stay tuned for that. It'll be later on in the month. I appreciate you watching. And it's like we always say, if you have a comment, leave it down below. I'll answer it. If it's video worthy, I'll make a video out of it. So, with that said, I appreciate you watching. Be prepared. See you on the next one.